If you have a few hours that you're trying to kill and you have an internet connection, I recommend investigating the most mysterious song on the internet. That that's that's what you should search for. You could search for it on YouTube. There are some really great videos. You could go to Reddit where there's a whole community dedicated to the most mysterious song on the internet. And there really is a most mysterious song on the internet because well, the community and the people on the internet have made it so, and we'll talk about that song briefly. But more importantly for Life's Potluck Buffet, we want to find out what's the least mysterious song on the internet and what's obvious about our lives that sometimes we don't think about. We'll ask the cards to give us some help with that. I'm John Paulus. You're listening to Life's Potluck Buffet only on YouTube. Let's start with the most mysterious song on the internet. I'm going to put a link to the actual song in the description so that you can listen to it. Warning, it is an earworm. That's, a well, it's kind of neat because the earworm, you know, you know that term where you have, there's something, there's some st- song that you, you know, you wake up and it's stuck in your head or you hear it during the day and you just can't get out of can't, can't get it out of your head. No, oh, no. Now you okay, there's a good example. Now you're going to have that Kylie Minogue song stuck in your head. Can't get you out of my head. Uh, uh-oh. Okay, sorry. So, now you know what an earworm is. And that's why I say, "Oh, I'm sorry you even said that out loud because now I'm ha- going to have that song stuck in my head all day." Well, you can erase the earworm that I just implanted by listening to the most mysterious song on the internet. It's actually a really good new wave 1980s song. The thing that's mysterious about it is no one has any idea who the band is, what the song is. All we really know about it is that it was recorded probably in 1984 off of a broadcast of Norddeutsche Rundfunk, which is a radio station out of Hamburg. And hello to all my friends in Hamburg. I hope you're doing well, and thanks for listening. So the the person who recorded it also recorded um, several other songs, or there's a tape with, like, apparently, this is what I've learned, there's a tape with several other songs recorded around the same time off of that radio station. And this has been pretty much the biggest lead of them all because knowing, well, radio stations have to keep track of all the songs they play. And that's because of royalties. Because you need to pay, you know, those songs are copyrighted and somebody or somebody's or something owns them. And so you need to pay royalties when you play them. So radio stations have always been in the practice of keeping logs of what song they play, when they play them, et cetera, et cetera, for those purposes. Now, that means that because we know some of the other songs that were played around the same time as uh, in the same span of time, which I understand is a couple of years. It may not be just 1984, but I think they've narrowed it down to that, the people who work on this. But the the other songs have been assigned labels by the uh, in the logs that the German government requires be kept by radio stations to record the playing of all the songs that they play. So somewhere in there might be the answer. Although it seems like this song may have been a one-off by maybe an unknown group that was maybe a demo, and it may be listed, but but maybe one day when the community that's searching for the name of the song and the group that's playing the song finds the name of the song and the group, it may be the only thing that the group has ever done. So that's also makes it extra mysterious because then what if there's nothing to find out about that group? So that's really interesting as well. But that is the most mysterious song in 
oh, on the internet, I almost said in the world, but on the internet. And it is an earworm. And oh, earworm comes from the German, Ohrwurm, which means earworm. But it's also the word for like things like earwigs. Do you know these things? They have like little pincers on on the on the you know on their ends, and they they um, I think that's it's like a myth that they like burrow into your ears or something. But I also understand that it might be just that they their pincers resemble ears when they're open. I don't know about that, but nonetheless, there's a whole mythology around this. That's not, not, they don't really burrow into anybody's ears. I mean, I understand from looking into it that it has happened accidentally. You know, it's a lost earworm. The earworm, the ear, ear, earwig is like, oh man, I should have made that left turn in Albuquerque. And so the, the earworm in, in started to get um, what we call calced. It's C A L Q U E. It's when you basically, translate a word into your language from another language and like use the same phrase so that um, Ohrwurm became earworm, which is a direct translation of the German earworm. And that we've used ever since. I think in the 70s is apparently the first use of it in a novel. And that is the earworm. It also has to do with Germany. It is the source of the earworm as well as this earworm. So it's a double earworm because the song is from Germany, seemingly, that it's a German uh, group. Although the song is in English, but it's it seems to be a German group, maybe. And um, it was definitely played on German radio in the '80s, and it definitely is an earworm. So a lot of German stuff going on around the most mysterious song on the internet. Now, as for the least mysterious song on the internet, I used Google Trends to explore and determine to my own satisfaction what the least mysterious song on the internet was. And here's how I did it. I searched Google Trends results for worldwide searches from 2004 to present on the web um, not on, not specifically on YouTube, on the web, just in general through Google. Okay, so these are Google searches, so a lot of searches. So we're just going to take this as indicative. You know, obviously there are searches on other search engines in other languages in other countries, as well as other search engines in countries that uh, use Google search frequently. So the, this is just an estimate. This is just a guesstimate of uh, let's say the least mysterious song in the Google searchable internet. Google searched internet is, well, okay. There's not, the top terms are things like, you know, in the music and and audio category, the top search terms, or queries as they call them on Google Trends are things like lyrics or MP3 or song or download or in Spanish, traductor, translator. So it's all looking for the words, really, or the music in, or the file. So there's pretty much that's those are the top kind of uh, search terms and for for music and audio. But if you go down the list, number twenty is the first time you run into an actual name that's not a generic thing to do with songs or music, and that name is Taylor Swift. So what I decided to do to determine the least mysterious song on the internet is I thought I would do a kind of YouTube search for what the most viewed Taylor Swift video is. And that video is Shake It Off from nine years ago. And it has 3.4 billion views. So... Taylor Swift, Shake It Off, is the least mysterious song on the internet. It's also pretty clear the message, so that's good, too, because you wouldn't want to have, you know, I would hate it if it were a song that people are like, what is that song about? It's pretty, it's, it's a pretty straightforward song, so it is not so mysterious in that way either, nor is the video. So it's a, it's a perfect candidate for our award of the least mysterious video on the internet. And let's ask the cards for something, some clarity about our lives to figure out what's mysterious and what's not mysterious. 
and just whatever the cards want to tell us. So let's go. Yellow lemons, blue dumplings, magenta noodles, cards, tell us something. All right, there it is. Oh my God. Oh my God. It's passions are for hobbies. I, I was about to say, do not be passions are for hobbies. Okay, it's passions are for hobbies. All right, if you're new to Life's Pilot Buffet, thank you for listening. But I have been in a struggle, a, a eternal struggle with card 28, passions are for hobbies. I, there was one episode where I drew the card three times in a row after reshuffling, doing everything, and also having had spoken about the card the day before. And so on that day, I thought we were done. We had talked about passions over hobbies so much that, I mean, I was done talking about it, but the cards seemed to never tire of the topic passions are for hobbies. So here it is for all of you new to Life's Potluck Buffet. Here's the card's advice. It's very bad advice to follow your passions to a job or to turn your hobby into a job. Hobbies and passions are work that we do for ourselves, not for others. For that reason, they are best for self-care and not for paid work. Do them with that idea in mind. If you make a buck doing them, then cool. So think about what your passion is and how that works into your life, how that fits into how you take care of yourself and do work for yourself, and consider how that's important for its own sake rather than for the sake of monetary gain. And don't forget to listen to the most mysterious song on the internet. It's in the description. And I'll see you tomorrow. And it won't be any mystery where you'll find me. You'll find me right here on Lifespot Look Buffet, only on YouTube.